former linebacker at the University of Alabama. Jawan, it's great to talk to you. I hope you're doing well. Things are good. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And uh, I want to spend some time uh, talking about your football career because uh, – it uh, has has led to some championships. You've played in the Canadian Football League for a number of years. Want to talk about that, but uh, also just get what you're up to these days. I, I was noticing you're a free agent currently in the Canadian Football League. Sort of give me your up to date with what's happening there. Uh, well, like you said, I'm a free agent now. I'm currently kind of struggling uh, to see if I want to possibly play another year or retire. You know, coaching has always been my dream. Uh, that's what I want to do. So I'm kind of around that and seeing what's available out there, uh, really with both sides of football and coaching as well. Are you back here in Alabama now? Yeah, back in North Alabama where I'm originally from. Gotcha. Juwan, when you made the transition from the University of Alabama, uh, you went briefly to the NFL and then went immediately to the Ca- the Canadian League, what was the biggest transition? What was the most difficult part of learning uh, the different way they play the, the game of football? I think it was just understanding that it was a 12th man on the field. You know, uh, you know, we come from down here in the, in the States, and we talk about the 11, you know, 11 guys on the field. And, uh, you know, that was a big transition. And seeing all the guys on offense moving uh, before the ball is snapped, you know, it took some time. Uh, you know, being a linebacker, you have to, you have to trust your eyes. And, and sometimes you can see too much. You know, at the end of the day, it's still football. So that, that was, the, I guess, the saving grace, which made the transition a lot easier. But, you know, I guess to answer your question, it has to be the, the, the field size of that 12th man on the field. Now, like when you look at uh, the, the Canadian Football League, uh, obviously it, it's a different culture. What What is the fan base like there when, when they get behind your team and, and, and support you guys? What, what you what, what is that? Is that is there a difference there? Oh, it's great. You know, and, and nothing can really compare to the SEC football and, and me playing at the University of Alabama, you know. Uh, so to go there, and I think they, the stadium I played in for them has maybe 30,000. Uh, but the fans, they love it. You know, it's played during the summer, uh, summer fall, uh, right before NFL gets going. So it's kind of the only thing, only show in town. And, you know, people love it. They come out and they support it. Um, the stadium's usually full, which is, you know, it's always good to play in front of a packed crowd. Um, you know, people love hockey up there. Let's, let's not get that mistaken. But football is, uh, is very far in line close to that. Yeah, it's, it seems like you know I've been to, uh, to Canada several times and and uh, traveled through Edmonton, which is a pretty solid football team, and uh, you could you, you could see the energy uh, there. And uh, as you land at the airport, they've got all the different Canadian Football League uh, uh, memos and, and posters and, and and figures and things like that. Yeah, you know Edmonton, Calgary, uh, you know they they have a rich history in football. Uh, they have great great hockey tradition as well. But there's the small towns, the, the Hamilton, the, the Saskatchewan, the Winnipeg's who, who really uh, don't have hockey. I think Winnipeg just got a hockey team. Uh, but to go in those towns, when that's all they have is football. You know, it really reminds you of being back in the South where, you know, football is, is priority. So um, it, it, it's fun, you know, and, and their fans are just like the fans here. Uh, they, they'll heckle you to get in the end. And uh, like I say, once you get on the field, though, uh, and the ball is snapped. You really don't pay attention to all that. Uh, same thing here as well. Let me ask you with with something that you were part of here of laying a foundation and looking at what Nick Saban has been able to do, capturing the last four out of the last seven national titles from a player perspective. Help us understand what Nick Saban has been able to do and, and sort of the key to uh, to his success. You know, it, it's kind of hard to, to put a finger on it. You know, it's he continues to amaze, you know, even me being a former player. Um, you know, once you win, and this team has always had a name. You know, the, the name carries so much weight. And he brings in such talented players, and they compete uh, year in and year out. And one thing about him that I, I truly admire is, uh, from a coach standpoint, is that he's going to put the best people on the field. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a senior or whatever the case. If you're, if you're the best player, you're going to be on the field. And that ultimately makes the team better. And, uh, you know, if you're a junior or a senior and you want that starting position, you're gonna you're gonna give it all you have. And, and the same thing goes with being a freshman. So you just see the way he has those guys and he has them molded. Uh, and it's, it's such a professional like atmosphere when those guys understand what's at stake. You know, when I was there, we were, we were, we won ten games one year, best season we ever had. But uh, you know, that's the norm now. And, and you know, once you set that bar high, and I think he kind of preaches this, 
once that bar has been set, you just continue on in that path, and uh, anything anything under that is, is unacceptable. And you know these guys have been doing awesome with these past what ten years that he's been there, man. It's, it's been exceptional to watch. Joanna, as we look at the defenses side of the football, uh, and this is a question that we've talked about here for a couple days. As we look at, I know you're a defensive guy, but offense is what attracts people uh, to the game as far as scoring points. We're in a score happy uh, league right now in college football. You know, people want to see scores. Uh, it was 45 to 40 in the national championship game. Does defense still mean the same? Is it as important as what it was uh, maybe even 10 years ago? Oh, without a question. You know, and, and you know, like you said, maybe I am being a little biased, but defense wins championships, you know. Um, you you got to have defense. You know, if you look at it, all the, the, the national championships that Alabama has won, or anybody for that matter of fact, they've had an extremely great defense, you know, whether it's uh, a, a great front to get after the quarterback, a great secondary. Um, so I don't, think it, I don't think it goes unnoticed. I just think that, like you said, the, the world wants to see a bunch of points. Uh, but, but all of those guys out there playing are, are extremely talented. I mean, uh, what do we have, three or four drafted this year? Uh, and, that, and that just says a lot about it. Yeah, certainly. Uh, and and Jawan Simpson right now with us here inside the game in Tuscaloosa as we move forward. Jawan, I, I want to ask you about a – uh, the, the technical side of football here for a minute. It's It's been a big discussion with this ineligible lineman downfield. Uh, college football is three yards. You're not allowed to have a three beyond three yards, but they really haven't been calling it. Now they say they're going to call it. When you're reading an offensive lineman on a possible run play or pass play, how much of an advantage is it if that offensive line is able to fire off beyond three yards? And as a linebacker, you're put in a position to try to read that offensive lineman. You know, is he pass blocking? Is he run blocking? Then you bite on a run, and then he pops you with a pass right over the top of your head. Uh, how challenging is that from a linebacker perspective? It's, it's you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough, and and like you said, if they don't put a stop on it, it, it nobody can stop it. Um, because as a linebacker, you, you know, you take those read steps that, that they call it, read steps, where you read, run a pass, you know. Uh, and normally you can read a play action. Play action brings you in a little more. But once that, that, that lineman gets up on you, then you're all engaged. You're all in thinking it's a run. And, you know, most times they sneak a guy behind the linebacker and, and dump the ball over the top of your head. So um, it's just one of those things that, I mean, it needs to be stopped. I don't know how it will be, seeing as it's, it's so much stuff happening on the field and you only have a few refs just watching all of this. Um, but it, it's one thing that definitely needs to stop. I mean, it, it, it kind of kills it. And it really, truly only affects the linebackers, possibly safety, but um, it, it, it could be crucial. Well, I mean, you, you bite on that you bite on that read, and it's, it's, it's one of those things in the NFL, it's one yard. Do you happen to know what it is in, in the Canadian Football League? You know, I tell you this. Regardless of whatever it is, I can tell you that it's it's not it's not really worried about. You know, okay. it's just one of those things. It's one of those things where they tell you, hey, if a lineman holds, you don't complain because you know they're going to do it. Um, and that's the same thing with us being a you know CFL being a, a big read option league where they you know that's all you have. You see it a lot of times. Lineman getting you know I've seen a lineman seven yards downfield. So it's just it's just one of those things where you know. You have to train yourself, and that comes with watching film, knowing what the linemen do, you know, on any given play. I, it just makes a lot more work for the linebacker, I guess, is a simple answer. When you look at mobile quarterbacks uh, in college football from your perspective, is that where we're going with a game of college football, that, that you've got to have some mobility to play that position? I guess it depends on, on what you have. You know, uh, if you don't have any great receivers, you, you, you kind of need a quarterback that can move. Uh, well, if you got great receivers, you got a quarterback just in the pocket and throw. I just it also depends on your personnel and what you're trying to get accomplished. Um, you know, some teams want to want to score a thousand points. They might feel like they need a mobile quarterback, but I don't think that's where it's going because you know, uh, with every with every good thing, there's a negative that comes with it. You know, you get those quarterbacks that scramble and run a lot. Um, they're probably not staying in the pocket as long as they should and missing maybe that deep ball. You know, and vice versa, you get a quarterback who loves to just sit in the pocket. Uh, he's missing that open lane to run. So, it, you know, it's kind of you take what you get, you know, with, with either one, and it's all about preference, Juwan, in my you, opinion. Juwan, if you were sitting down and you talked about getting back in high school, what 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 memory sticks out to you about playing at the University of Alabama? 
Uh, it didn't have to be the Florida game. <laughs> the, my junior year, uh, we were both highly ranked. I think they were four, and we were maybe six or eight, maybe. Um, and, and us just coming out in the, the stadium, it's been the loudest that I've ever been a part of. And You know, we come out and we just, you know, we beat them pretty bad. And, you know, we had an unfortunate, in- unfortunate injury with Tyrone Poto as well. So all of that. You know, when I when I think about college, that that's kind of what sticks out to me. That's the one game that sticks out because, you know, it was so great and we're doing all this great stuff, and then you have this this bad injury. So it's kind of like all of that sticks out. You know, some for a great reason and some for bad reasons. You know, so the Florida game, two thousand and five, I think it was. So that that that's your that's your favorite game that you were part of, uh, Juwan. Talk about the brotherhood, the fraternity. Uh, I'm sure that you're so still connected with so many of those former players that you played with, your teammates. Uh, talk about that fraternity and that brotherhood that you guys had uh, with playing at the University of Alabama. Well, it, it, it's kind of something that is it, unspoken, but you know, you know, you go through the, the blood, sweat, and tears with those guys, you know, and, it, and it's, you know, th- those are the most important years of your life, really, between the ages of 17, 18, and 21, 22. Uh, you know, a lot of things happen in life, uh, you know, whether it's in your family or in school or whatever the case, and, and those are guys that, that know you, you know. Um, and you just keep on and you just, you just continue to keep up with each other after the fact. And, you know, LeRon McClain, Terrence Jones, uh, Freddie Rose, Nico Rines, Roman Hart, those are just names that, that I just off the top of my head that I just consistently keep in contact with. And it's, and it's always we pick up where we left off from. And, uh, we have a, we call ourselves Bama Sci Fi. It's a fraternity that Thomas started, and it's uh, it's one that, that sticks and holds. And even the older guys, the guys that didn't play with me, you know, uh, or were seniors when I was coming in, even those guys, uh, we keep in contact, whether it's through social media or texting. Uh, that those those are lifelong relationships that that were bonded in college and, and have continued to grow. Juwan Simpson, final couple of questions here. Uh, as you said, you were getting ready, and, and when will you make your decision if you're going to hang up the cleats or uh, go into coaching? When, when will you make that decision? Uh, well, <laughs> whenever something comes available. <laughs> okay. So, you know, uh, you know uh, coaching is really what I want to do, you know. Um, and, you know, football actually is, is kind of like backdoor, really. Uh, you know, I had an opportunity to play. Uh, like, I originally got a release from my team. I had an opportunity to play, but uh, the money wasn't what I wanted to play for or go back to Canada for. You know, my family's here. Um, so that's kind of on the back burner for me. So coaching is what I want to do. That's kind of that's kind of where my mind is. Uh, you know, football, I've been doing it eight, nine years, and, you know, I love it, and it, it, it's great. Uh, but I can continue that passion on, 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 on the sidelines as opposed to, to playing. So um, I guess with the, asking your question, all my eggs are in the coaching basket, and, uh, you know, I'm guessing – September, August, September, somewhere is when it, it'll be official in my eyes, well, one way or another. Well, you, you, Jawan, you, you talk about the impact. You know, I, I think of the influence that coaches have throughout this country, whether it's the college level, whether the high school level, or even prior to that, or even above that in the NFL or the Canadian Football League. I think about the impact. You, you talk to so many different people 30 and 40 years after their playing days, and, and they still remember – the difference that a coach makes. I mean, it's so influential for our youth and uh, the way that we mold them into better people. Football, uh, there's so many things in football that you can apply to the game of life. There is, and, and you say that, and, you know, I think about one of my high school coaches, Coach Mitchell Knox, and I also think about Coach Joe Kind. I mean, they kind of they kind of take you, and they, they're your parents, or they're your parents or, or your father away from home, you know, and, and I didn't quite understand that you know, initially, but me going through through life and going through certain things and understanding that uh, those guys are the ones who I still, well, not, not Coach Collins, I haven't talked to him in a while, but this Coach Knox, I still call him for, for advice to this day. So um, it's kind of the same thing with, with, with your, the players you play with, those are bonds that, that you build. And um, like you say, they give you life lessons, and uh, if you just take it and take heed to what they're saying, and, um, I, I want to do that. You know, I, I've been a part of a lot of craziness uh, when it comes to this football. And, and you know, if, and if I can give this advice to somebody else and, and guide them and lead them in a the proper way, that's, then I feel like I've done my job. Juwan, can you impersonate uh, Coach Kynes with that voice? I mean, can, can you go there with us? I mean, as a, as a future coach here, I mean, do you have the Coach Kynes voice? 
not a chance. I think only Coach Kynes has a Coach Kynes voice. I, I, I'd love to get that guy just to read the phone book. You know what I mean? I mean, just set him in the mic and say, here, read the phone book. I mean, he's just got that voice that uh, brings you uh, to college football and grabs your attention. You know, the crazy thing is I tell people, uh, they hear, they think about his voice and they say, oh, he must have used profanity. I think I may have heard him use profanity maybe once in, in my three and a half, four years with him. I mean, he he wasn't a he wasn't a cursed guy, but he would get that deep voice, and he would I'm talking about just rip you a new one, and, and not even and not even use profanity. And uh, so that's one thing I admired about him. And um, oh, sorry about that. That's one thing I, I admired about him. 